welcome to Polymer Clay TV. I'm Kira. And I'm Alicia. And today we're going to show you another fun project using one of our digital downloads. Um, you notice that I'm still in my Austin studio, but right now, at this very moment that you're watching this, I'm actually probably painting my new studio in Maryland. <laughs> so, in a couple of weeks, we'll reveal that once it gets um, in a condition that I would like to film it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still working on my studio, as most of you probably know. I recently built a studio, and I found out once I moved in that things were not where I really needed them to be. You know, I did all my mixed media stuff all at the other end of the building, so now I'm moving it all over and whatever. But So Kira's got her hands full coming up here. But this is the collage sheet that Kira's going to be making a bracelet from today. And this is um, the one that comes out in February. Obviously, it's geared towards Valentine's and, and has lots of hearts and, and fun stuff on there. And, and you can check that out um, under Art Kits in craftylink.com. And that's where it is. And we will post the videos there, too. So actually, if you subscribe here on Polymer Clay TV on YouTube, then you will automatically get notified of the new videos that we do. And what we're wanting to do is a couple houseware videos, you know, or things for the home, and then a couple jewelry videos each month. So definitely stay tuned for that. So here you go, Kira, you take it over and show them how to make a fun bracelet. <laughs> so I have some supplies here that um, I just want to show you what I'm doing. Uh, obviously, I'm using that collage sheet that Elisa showed you and I have a piece of clay that's been rolled to a number one on my pasta machine. I have some ink um, scissors which I'll show you what those are for in a minute and a poker and a texture mat. So the very first thing that I did is I created the this thing right here which is a piece of white clay that I put onto the um, can, and my can in my studio, I attach a piece of um, epoxy clay to the bottom to make a foot so that it doesn't roll around in the oven. And then I use these as armatures for bracelet making because they're a, a good um, circumference there for fitting on your wrist. So all I did is I took this section down the side here that has the butterflies on it and I made it into this strip that I transferred onto the piece of white clay. I put it on the can and I baked it and now this piece is actually baked. So then the next thing is that I, my intention was to create links to put on a bracelet. So this link is finished and baked and I'm going to show you how to make it. So basically you've got the textured red clay underneath the a piece of this transferred baked section and I bake them in stages and I'll explain why as I'm as I'm putting this together. So you get your clay onto your tile and then you're going to texture it. And I'm just using a texture sheet from Sculpey and you can use your fingers or you can roll over it with your roller to impress the texture into the clay. Is that on the thickest setting of your pasta machine? It is. It's a number one. On the Atlas, it's a number it's one. On my Atlas, yeah. It's <laughs> so a, the thickest setting, yeah. Yeah. So just get it nicely, deeply impressed. And then you've got that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take pieces of it And I'll, I'm, I am not a measurer, so I'm kind of just eyeballing. eyeballing them so that they're all about the same. Yeah. I probably only need four for a bracelet to fit my wrist, but I'm just, I'll make five just in case, in case something happens. Because you never know, sometimes, you know, maybe your measurements were off or whatever. And then remove these from the tile and transfer them onto the can. Now you can use some kind of release if 
you know, it's cold where Kira is right now. It's actually cold where I am in North Florida, too. <laughs> when it's cold, you don't need a release as much because the clay is not as sticky. But if right. you do need something to release, you can use some water or you can use um, some silicone spray or even some baby powder. But baby powder would be my last choice because you can actually still see it on the clay. Whereas right. with water or the silicone spray like an Armor All or something, you don't see. You can you can get that off. Right. Yeah. The um, she's talking about a release for this. Right. Because for the sometimes stamp. your texture mats can get actually stuck in your clay. Yeah. If it's a warm day and the clay's really soft, it will get stuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have pieces I can't get out. I you know because I do live in Florida and I, we get lots of warm days, but uh, today is not one of them. Right. Okay, so this is where the um, scissors come in because you can use scissors to cut thin pieces of, of clay that are baked. So I'm going to take a piece of this that has a few butterflies on it there and just cut it and then stick it right on here in the middle. The beauty of that, it's already formed with that that angle so that it'll fit you, your wrist properly. Right, and because I, I pre-baked this segment, now I can mash on it and, and play with it to get it to stick and I don't have to worry about ruining my transfer. Exactly. So you'll just do that for as many segments as you want to make. and stick them in there and then the next part would be <laughs> trying not to <laughs> get my can to pop in like that so then the next part would be making the holes so I'm gonna make a hole at each end corner because I think this bracelet is gonna be big and chunky so it's gonna need two attachment points on each side and that's really to prevent it from like flipping around on your wrist, you know. I hate it when big beads flip over to the wrong side or it's annoying. So basically you do that four times or five times, however many times you think you need to. And then you'll bake it right on the can. And then you have links that look like this and you can decide what you want to do with them. So now I've got white clay on the sides, which I will use some, some glitter or like a glitter paint and go over that. And then I've got these Versa Magic. Um, this is a dew drop, but it's a multi-surface chalk ink. So usually you'll see us using the Sukuneko. This is a Sukuneko product, but you'll see us with the um, Brilliance inks because those are super iridescent and beautiful. But we don't talk about the chalk inks very much. Um, but chalk is hot right now in the crafting world. So. Right. It pr produces a nice matte look and if you use it on a piece that you've embossed or textured like that, like with this texture matte, then what you're going to get is the chalk will go on the raised areas. Right. For those of you that don't know, Sukuneko has changed its name to Imagine Crafts. So if you go looking for Sukuneko, you may not be able to find exactly what, what Kira is working with. So look up Imagine Crafts. That's their USA-based new name for mm. the company. But yeah. they sell them at different craft stores all over the place. They're very easy to find. Yeah, these dew drops I got at Michael's. So they're... There was a lady hard. who mentioned, uh, oh, she's from South Africa. She's in our community. Her name's Karen. And, you know, she was saying how, you know, she wished she had a Michaels. And, you know, we take that for granted here in America, that we can just run to the store and get craft supplies. And it's much harder for them to do that, you know, in other countries, especially, some, I guess, in South Africa. They don't have, you know, big box stores like that, you know, that carry crafts. And a lot of countries are like that. So we take that for granted, you know, that we can go there with our 40 off coupon and save some money and, and you know, and that happens pretty much every week. So, yeah, but, I, I, you know, we found also that we do a lot more shopping online nowadays because even these big box stores don't always have what you're looking for, you know. They can't carry everything. So yeah. online's a good place to find stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, 
enjoy you know the transfer sheet that we create each month now is it's made to be all cut up and used in different ways so you know that part of it just inspired me to make a bracelet but you can make earrings you can even frame something with it like make make a little ATC frame or something yeah so You'll get to see what I make with it next. Yes. <laughs> you and I do such different things, and that and that's the fun of it, you know. You'll get all these different perspectives and, mm -hmm. and whatnot on it. So yeah, I have so, different ideas. So feel free to bake all your pieces, you know, on your on right on the can. Of course, drink what's in the can first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it pops right off the can. It's easy to get off, so you don't have to worry about that, you know. Yeah. And we'll put pictures of the finished bracelet on polymerclaytv.com mm -hmm. and also in the community at craftylink.com. And uh, I just want to tell you also, um, if you ever want to check us out on the social networks, all you have to do is go to the About Us on Polymer Clay TV YouTube channel. Just click on where it says About, and there's a list with links to all of our... Um, are like Google and Facebook and Pinterest so you don't have to hunt around for us. You know, add us. We'd love to have you add us. We'll add you and, you know, get to see what everybody's making. <laughs> yeah, speaking of adding us, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss an announcement or a video. Definitely. And also, we still have that big thing up and coming, so if you want to get on the invite list, go to polymerclayadventure.com and sign up and you'll be the first to get an invite. So. It's big. <laughs> and you want to be a part of this, so definitely get on the list. So, yeah. yeah so, so join us next week. Yep. See you next and time we'll see on you Clay TV. Mm -hmm.